Welcome Aquarius to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 4th of September for the Sun or the Ascendant. Since the 23rd of July, Venus, the planet of relating but also of money, has been retracing her steps in your sector of partnership. Now it's possible over those six weeks that something hasn't evolved at quite the pace you would like. Or if you're in an existing relationship, perhaps things have been slower between you and your partner, but it's been an opportunity to think carefully about what they need from you, but also what you're prepared to give to them. Venus can be diplomatic. The seventh house is urging us to find a point of harmony, but it needs to be thoughtful harmony. Now, it's also possible that if you are single, you have been thinking about the type of person you'd like to bring into your life. And you could be setting your intentions or have done to that uh, hope. Just be aware that Venus Direct from Monday of this week goes on through to the 9th of October in the sign of Leo. So your ability to attract goodness to you around relationships is magnified from now until that point. But it doesn't mean to say that it was entirely blunted over the last six weeks, perhaps just slower, a bit, a bit more sluggish. And also if you've been looking to reach some kind of point of contract, an agreement, that also may have been a little elusive too. Now, ironically, Jupiter, the planet of growth, goes retrograde on Monday through to the end of the year. But it's in the part of your situation to do with your emotions. Jupiter rules two signs. Sagittarius is, to me, the, the sign that gives Jupiter its reputation, which is for growth, optimism, fortune. But it also rules the sign of Pisces, which is very much about the spiritual dimension. And between now and the end of the year, you can discover a lot about what you want to bring in to the core of your life. And that, most of all, is our relationship with ourselves. The fourth house, that inner relationship. And because Jupiter can also be about knowledge, the retrograde can help you to become much better informed about what makes you tick in terms of your personal identity, uh, your motivations and what you need, the nurturing needs you have in your life. Now there are, uh, is of course the physical plane which is where we live and find shelter but also the emotional dimension of security. So both of those things come under the astral microscope with Jupiter slowing down. But on Monday, Mercury forges a stunning angle to Mercury. These two planets are terrific for contracts, deals, trade. And because Mercury, although it's in retrograde, is in your eighth house of longer term finance, anything to do with pensions, property, uh, entrepreneurship, um, the deal that I just mentioned, can really, despite this retrograde, find a trigger point that's positive. Sometimes with Mercury retrogrades, the thing that we started in the previous Mercury retrograde will get resolved in the current Mercury retrograde. So look out for something that started in May. It may complete now and hopefully it will for you. Then Mercury goes on to connect with the sun. They're absolutely wrapped up with one another. And this is called in traditional astrology a Mercury Kazemi. What the sun does is amplify, the radiance of the sun amplifies the brilliant quick wits of Mercury. Mercury in the eighth house in the sign of Virgo for you is great for precision, but it's also great for understanding the subtext. It has a more scorpionic influence. It's good for transformation, but it's also good for thinking deeper down into situations. So you have a great opportunity to problem solve something at the heart of this week or to get a greater understanding of the mechanics of something that may require some careful scrutiny. But once you apply your flair to it, your natural uh, openness to new and innovative ideas or technology can work very much in your favor. Now, if you're someone who's a bit more resistant to uh, new ways of doing things, don't worry, Mercury in its conjunction with the sun can still help you to just arrow into a situation with a great deal of perception.
There is a quarter moon, however, in your sister air sign of Gemini on Wednesday. So that's the fifth house. The sun, the receptor sun, is house eight. If there is in a romantic situation a feeling that someone uh, doesn't quite understand your longer term hopes, particularly in terms of if you're prepared to be very invested and dedicated to something and they want the more frivolous elements of the relationship but they're not prepared to be as committed around the serious side, that may be something that does need to be looked at between you. If you're single, however, you could be attracted to someone who's quite flirty but just be aware of where you are this is a part of the year where the more serious side of your nature is coming to the fore now if you're in a long-term relationship which isn't working so well and there does tend to be some uh, lack of trust i feel because mars moved into your sector of adventure and last week was connecting with your traditional ruler of Saturn, it's possible that you didn't quite get Mars's magic, but this week Mars will give you a lot of desire to break free from something that isn't working well for you. So these more devo devotional and sensitive and psychological influences that are going on between the sign of Virgo and the sign of Taurus, they still can be affected by Mars's drama. And Mars really is kind of looking for the higher truth the ninth house and can be impatient but i think you need to temper mars but if there was a situation where you really felt you'd given it absolutely everything perhaps what mars will do is push you to march to the door marked exit it just depends on your unique circumstances but as the week comes to a conclusion the sun and Jupiter forge a magnificent trine. This is one of the luckiest of all aspects in astrology. Jupiter, despite its retrograde, is about growth. And the growth for you is going to be around your inner world or something to do with where you live or adapting where you live to make it more spacious. Jupiter loves space. Or to gain more knowledge about the emotional dimension, which then informs how you can connect to others, the eighth house. The eighth house is very much to do with deep transformations. And the more we understand our motives, the more we can tune into other people and understand theirs. So we do have the retrograde of Jupiter, the retrograde of Mercury, our prominent factors this week, as is the Mercury Kazemi. But I feel that with Venus going direct, and the opportunities that are being primed between Mercury and Jupiter, the Sun and Jupiter, there still can be a week where you have some kind of big breakthrough and things start to gain traction in a substantive way because of the Earth sign energy of Taurus and Virgo. Something tangible can start to shape up for you this week that you can be really pleased about. Now, I'd just like to remind you that you can watch your year 2024 deep dive forecast by clicking on the link beneath this video. And also, if you want to take advantage of my very special opportunity to order your year 2024 personal forecast now, based on your unique birth data, no two charts are the same, and you can get 30% off and your personal character analysis or life roadmap to gain a more intimate understanding of your life patterns, please see the link beneath this video too. Thank you.